When I speak to you today, I think back to the commencement address at my law school graduation, the same law school graduation that was attended by Dean Bielek. Now, I know what you're all thinking. She looks so much younger than I do. <laughs> I cannot tell you the name of the speaker, nor do I have any clue what he said. I recall only that at the end of his address, a fellow law student, Marcy Schaefer, if you're keeping track, who was sitting next to me, asked, what was that all about? And I said, the best I can figure, he is telling us that we are not yet Jedi warriors. <laughs> that was 36 years ago, a few weeks after the opening of the second film of the first Star Wars trilogy, The Empire Strikes Back. So now, six months after the opening of the first film of the third Star Wars trilogy, The Force Awakens, it is my turn. I will begin by telling you a secret. Lean in, I don't want anyone else to hear. We are reimagining what it means to be a court system. And that means we need to reimagine what it means to practice law. And I will tell you another secret. No one is better positioned than you to understand what that means, because Dean Bielek has known this secret for the past three years, and your law school education has been designed to prepare you for that change. What does that mean? It means that you understand and your education has been shaped by the recognition that the vast majority of persons in this country do not have a lot of money, and that an even greater majority of this country do not have very much in savings. In a May 2016 Atlantic Monthly cover story by Neil Gabler, he noted and proved that nearly everyone in this country is struggling financially, including those who think of themselves as middle class. He referred to it as financial impotence, not only because it is a devastating personal tragedy for a, number, for a great number of people, but it also it is a, a circumstance which very few people, especially those who are middle class, are prepared to discuss publicly. To maintain what we used to call a middle class lifestyle now requires an income for a family of four of more than $130,000 per year but the median family income in this country is about half of that. 55% of American households do not have enough liquid savings to replace one month of lost income. And those whose income is within 150% of the poverty line are eligible for legal services, but more than 60% of them are turned away because there is too little funding for legal services to be able to provide help to all but 40% of them. For the vast majority of this country, not only the poor, but the working class and the middle class, and even for some share of the middle class, for the upper middle class, if they are going to receive legal assistance, it will need to be affordable legal assistance, preferably fixed fee legal assistance. After all, when we go to the garage to repair our car, if the mechanic were to say it's going to cost you $60 an hour, none of us would leave that car with that mechanic unless we knew what the total bill was going to be. Increasingly, people are going to demand the same accountability from our legal mechanic as they require of their auto mechanic. You also realize that Persons who have problems don't generally only have one problem. The one thing that m many of us are rich in is the number of problems that we are dealing with. In the words of the poet Langston Hughes, you recognize that let life ain't been no crystal stair. The woman who was being evicted from her public housing apartment 
may be being evicted because her son is under arrest for the possession of cocaine with the intent to distribute. He may be involved in the sale of drugs because he has himself a drug problem and his parents may be looking to him to get him civilly committed so that he may be able to address that problem. They may need to apply for Medicaid benefits to be able to pay for that treatment. And if her son is convicted, if he is not a U.S. citizen, he may face deportation. And that woman may be in public housing because she may be in the midst of a divorce from an abusive spouse. Not all of these problems will be addressed in state court or in, for that matter, any court. Immigration matters will be handled in the immigration court. Medicaid matters, unemployment matters will be handled in a state administrative agency. Employment discrimination will begin at the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination and only then will find its way into a state court. The lawyer who will help them to be able to navigate through these problems will need to know a great deal of law because you need to know a great deal of law to be able to address a great number of problems. We need corporate lawyers, tax lawyers, personal injury lawyers, criminal lawyers, and insurance lawyers. But the greatest need right now in this country is for community lawyers, those with the skills to help the 80% of us confront that, the legal problems that too many of us will face. Problems of family law, housing law, health care law, immigration law, labor and discrimination law. How great is the need? Well, right now in the probate and family court in Massachusetts, an estimated 50 to 75 percent of all litigants statewide appear in court without an attorney. They are there because they need to address questions of alimony, questions of child custody, questions of guardianships. In our housing court, Roughly 93% of the tenants and 41% of the landlords appear without counsel to handle matters of eviction. How great is the need? Even in family court cases where there is a constitutional right to counsel, we cannot find enough lawyers to represent those individuals who are in court. When the Department of Children and Families takes away a child from a parent because they fear the parent is unfit, the parents and the child are entitled to a prompt hearing before a judge to determine whether the department acted lawfully. The loss of a child is a loss of liberty, and that means there is a constitutional right to counsel. And if you cannot afford counsel, the state will provide one for you. But even though there is a constitutional right to counsel and the state will pay for counsel, we are struggling right now to provide these hearings within the appropriate time frame required by law because we cannot find enough lawyers trained in family law to represent the parties. Community lawyers address common problems, but common problems do not mean that they are simple problems. All of the areas involved in community practice have grown, grown complex in recent years. And those who know the cases that the SJC have written over the last few years may say, yeah, and you were the ones who made them more complex. Questions we deal each day in our court with difficult issues involving foreclosure, eviction, the new alimony law, areas in which immigration and state law intersect. On the Supreme Judicial Court, we hear cases from each of our seven trial court departments. And apart from the first degree murder cases, virtually every case we hear has been chosen because it raises difficult and unresolved questions of law. And some of the most challenging cases that we confront involve community lawyers. And in many of the cases involving community lawyers, the stakes are enormous. In family court, what is at issue might be the custody of the children, the financial stability of the spouse, the care of the child whose parent is 
struggling with addiction and no longer can care for her child. The case of the parent or grandparent now suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's who needs a guardian to watch over their affairs. In housing court, the loss of a home to foreclosure or eviction, and for some, the loss of that home means the risk of at least temporary homelessness. For others, the prospect of financial ruin from medical cost arising from a medical emergency. For others, discrimination or sexual harassment in the workplace. In immigration court, the possibility of being deported to a country that you may not remember, or perhaps even a country where you will face death or persecution. One immigration court judge in San Diego says that with respect to the asylum cases that occur in her court, she refers to her court as handling, quote, death penalty cases in a traffic court setting. As a public law school, you are trained to do anything that you choose to do as a lawyer. But it is fitting that your focus has been on serving the needs of the public. Your school is the birthplace of Justice Bridge, the first law school incubator of new community lawyers in New England. Under the leadership of Dean Bielek and the steady hand of managing attorney Len Zandro, Justice Bridge is not only teaching UMass law graduates how to succeed as community lawyers, it is teaching the entire legal profession how to provide high quality lawyering, high quality lawyering at a price that most can afford. Since Justice Bridge was launched in August of 2014 at its offices in Boston and New Bedford, it has processed 2,500 cases in over 170 communities, and their clients have an average household income of just over $26,000. You are not only law school graduates, you are pioneers and you are blazing the path for the entire profession of law. You are doing so by recognizing that to be a successful lawyer, you must not only have the skills of a lawyer, but you must also have the skills of an entrepreneur and a manager. Lawyers need to innovate to survive. They need to learn and adapt to new technologies. They need to find new and better and less expensive ways to solve problems. They need to understand the market for legal services, to identify niches in the market that they can capably fill, and to find ways to demonstrate to potential clients their ability and experience. Entrepreneurs need to be comfortable with risk, with change, with a vision of a future that is not entirely predictable and so do successful lawyers. So you may not yet be Jedi warriors, but with the knowledge, training, and experience that you have received from this law school, and with the intelligence, grit, and perseverance that you came here with, I like your chances. May the force be with you. Congratulations. Thank you.